friends that are here today. Good to see everybody here. I think of Norma's here. You know, we had a funeral on Thursday. With, uh, Norma's husband, Elmer. And then we had a baptism on Saturday. We think of from end of life to beginning of life. Little forest. And he's still smiling at me. <laughs> he wasn't that way on Friday. We first met. He kind of wanted to keep his eye on mom. So, um, you know, it's, it's a unique, a unique week it has been in a lot of different ways. We go from dealing with the passing of somebody that uh, care about. And I just realized there's a lot about Elmer I didn't know. You know, it's just, uh, it's just. It's wonderful to hear from Larry and Tim some of the stories that they've, that they've had with their dad, especially one of the corn people, you know, that's, that's a great one. Because I was telling the, the band this morning, going like, you know, if that would have been me cultivating corn, which I, I have done that, and if I would have been out of the role or took out a part of the role of the corn, my dad would not have a, approved of it. <laughs> he just said, Jim, if you get tired, you just stop and take a snooze. But if you tear out the corn, you are in big trouble. And I just think, you know, what a, what a, a lesson on grace. That number would go and put all of that corn back. And then um, by the time Larry came back, he, he'd be done. And he would just say to, to Larry, be more careful next time. That's all he said. I, I would never have happened to you, but uh, what, a, what a great story. And I didn't realize that he was t particularly a quiet guy. And I just thought he was just that way he told him to be quiet. <laughs> but he, he, was, he was who he was, and I was like, he's going to be missed around here. But thank you for uh, being here this morning. You know, it's a lot different. I'm glad that Nancy's right next to you. Otherwise, you'd be in that pupil by yourself. So. But I do want to say that uh, I did something I've never, never done in my entire life in this week. There's got a baptism out at Metz Beach. I didn't even know where Metz Beach was. And uh, baptized in the forest out there. And uh, it was just a special, special time. And again, I played, you know, I really don't know the Moore family very much. But I sure got to know them yesterday and spent time with them. And we should say we did, and it was really a lot of fun as well. And, um, I go like, how could I be not find a park if I found it? <laughs> um, I think it was a good time. And so, yeah, I got to meet uh, Forrest's mom and dad. So, I mean, it's Forrest Stephen Dolph Moore. And so, I had to figure that one out for a while. You go, Okay, Stephen Moore, it's got to be his son, which is Skyler. And then Dolph would be the, his, uh, your maiden name would be Dolph, because you're the only child to keep the family name alive. And so he, his name is, in, with his, with his, is kind of the name with that. So it's just a special time. I'm glad to meet you guys and have a safe trip back when you're all done celebrating the 4th of July. And, and uh, I still want to wrestle Joe. You know, but, uh, I don't see Dean. I might have to do that. It's good to have everybody here today. Thanks for coming and being a part of the Fourth of July uh, weekend. And um, just want uh, you to know that if you've got a bulletin you can read. There are things in there just for your information, things that are coming up. Oh, there's one thing: the men's breakfast. We met yesterday. Do you know how many men we had? Ten. <laughs> but because it was on a weekend, we think we should that should be times three. So there was thirty. <laughs> but this is a holiday weekend. So we should get a little extra credit for having a little time. 
So I thought that was pretty, pretty cute of uh, John Arthur who said, you know, there should be something special here. Of course, being a uh, uh, national holiday weekend type of thing. So it was his idea. Take it times two. He said two. I said, that won't be enough. You gotta go three. Oh, we're gonna have to start calling before yeah. you. So I know. <laughs> so anyway, let's just have a word of prayer together this morning and the ladies continue on worshiping the Lord as well. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for everyone that has come to the doors this morning. Grateful, Lord, for little Forrest, uh, the new life that uh, you've given to him. And we just are so grateful for his grandparents as well as his mom and his dad. And, and it's just exciting. It's a kind of exciting thing to celebrate together and uh, to know that uh, you are going to work in ways that we have no idea what that will be. We just thank you for this little guy. And we also just thank you too, Lord, just for the memories you've given to us with Elmer. And uh, we also think of Walt Meyer, who's in the hospital in St. not St. Uh, Sioux Falls. And he's got a lot of different things going on with him. And Cheryl is there with him by his side. And we just pray, Lord, that your healing touch would be upon his body as well as be with the doctors and those that are taking care of him. Uh, sounds like he's got a long role to, to hold there. And uh, we know that with Jesus by his side and faith in him, that he just keeps looking up. We know that he is not there alone. Even if Cheryl is there, we know that, Lord, you are there with him as well. Because you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You never went. And so we were mindful of him as well as with Dwayne Anderson and Vicky as they continue to deal with Dwayne's situation on a daily basis. And we don't know how much longer he does either. But we know that you are with him as well, with them both, and that your grace is. Sufficient, even though it's difficult to see someone we love and close to this along the way. And so, Lord, today as we come together to worship you and get to come to your table, if we decide to do so today, Lord, we just pray that you would use this morning as a way that we know we've spent time with you, that we've done business with you, that we have come closer to you, no matter where we may be in our lives. So we are grateful for everyone that is here. And uh, we're going to sing two of the, uh, the hymns saying and the potluck that we had last Sunday. We're just grateful that there was people that came. And there's some that are here today because of that. And uh, we are we're thankful. Just pray to the Lord for the mom from Lake Park who passed away at 104. We prayed for a Sunday night that uh, she died that night. So I uh, just pray for the family as they make the arrangements and go through the things that need to be done to bring her back and to be buried in Little Park, Iowa. And so Lord, uh, there's a lot of other needs that are here in our midst here today. You know each and every one. Thank you for being here. Thank you for loving us and going to the cross for each and every one of us and rising again on the third day. And uh, may there be good news. That is shared today as well as we come together and uh, worship you. We pray this Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Later this summer, and closer to Jason Ray, Jason Seaman will be as part of the Bible conference. He wrote a song that's we're going to share today. I'll remind you who I am. And pay close attention to the, the words to realize just how precious we are.
responsive reading this morning goes along with our communion service that we will have shortly after the message. It says, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open. That's a scary thought, isn't it? All hearts are open. God knows everything about you this morning and yesterday and tomorrow. He knows you. And tomorrow. All desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take some time in silence as we let the Lord speak to our hearts and by his Holy Spirit show us the sins that we need to confess to him this morning and uh, it be just a special time as he listens to your heart this morning.
don't know where they're going to stay for the evening because they go to the village or to the place and it's whoever invites you to stay with them, that is what they're to do. And with that comes other things. That means whatever they set before you to eat, you are to eat it. Don't complain. So if they give you a goat's eye in goat's head soup, you know, you just don't go, yeah, I'm not going to eat that. What else do you got? I'll take some Oreos and some that. No, you don't get that privilege. What is set before you, you eat. And now you're thinking that they're going to probably go to different places where it's a different customs or different culture. They're going to eat things that they've never eaten before. These are probably more like the Jewish disciples. So they have their Jewish eating laws and, and regulations that they're to follow. And Jesus is saying, whoever invites you to their home, say that there's peace there, and that's where you stay. Don't go jumping around from house to house. Just stay at that one place. And uh, be a good servant there. They don't know how they're going to be treated when they get to these places. But Jesus tells them that this is what they're to do. When you go there, heal the sick. Wonderful. Great. How many of us would be comfortable in hearing that? Go and heal the sick. Tell them the kingdom of God is near. Oh, that's another wonderful thing. How many today want to hear that kind of news? God's coming. Are you ready? Who's going to enjoy that kind of news? There's some who will. Some who won't. So that's what Jesus tells them to do. So the bottom line is this. Know what you're getting into when it comes to following Jesus. Know what you're getting into. It's just like when you get married. Know what you're getting into, right? What do you have to show? Do you know what you're getting into, Scott? No. <laughs> Aaron is a great mom. It's nice to just say, honey, you do a great job with forest. But Jesus is telling his disciples that he sends out, know what you're giving into. It's, it's not, it's not going to be a cakewalk. It's not going to be easy. So lesson one is this. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And that's so true, isn't it? There is a lot to do for the Lord when it comes to meeting people and Inviting people to come to know Jesus as their Savior. But there's not that many that really want to go out and do that. But he says, pray. Pray to the Lord that he would raise up those people that they would go. So I'm not probably somewhat of a, an answer to somebody's prayer. That uh, doing what people have been praying and asking the Lord for. This is a great missionary, missionary passage. Some of you probably heard that some mission meetings where it says, uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And uh, it's probably about all the further they go. But the next line, it says, go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Isn't that great news? What's the characteristic of a lamb? Vulnerable? Probably not too smart. Um, gentle? If you uh, know anything about sheep, where one sheep goes, what happens to the rest of them? The rest follow. And if one jumps, they'll all jump. There's, not, there's nothing for the jump. Over. And so you just kind of go like, well, you can't stop it. You just kind of go there like, okay. They just, they just do that. What's the characteristic of a wolf? It's 
strong, sneaky, they're pretty smart, they're powerful, they got big fangs that are not there just to, for show, but a wolf will attack a lamb and that lamb will be his next meal. So Jesus says, I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Wow. Who wants to be signed up for that? We do everything we can to avoid wolves. Now, it might, it might be of interest to you, what, what is a wolf today? Well, it might surprise you. Mommy. You know, we know in Scripture it says that there are those that are in sheep's clothing, but they're wolves at heart. They're wolves that are in sheep's clothing. And so it's like, who are those guys? Well, I'll just say to you that there are pastors. There are theologians today who fit this. They do not really want to tell you the truth. And they're very nice people. But they will not tell you the truth. Because they want you to like them. So in other words, there are going to be people that will be for you and there will be people who will be against you. I've seen this firsthand over the years and being a lot of different ministerials in different churches that I've pastored in, in different communities. And you can tell right away the ones that you're going to get along with, and you can tell right away the ones you're going to have a difficult time with. The ones you have a difficult time with are those that do not see any need to believe in the miracles of Jesus. So when it comes to the feeding of the 5,000, guess what? They say that everybody brought a sack lunch. And they ate their sack lunch. Jesus did not perform a miracle. The people brought the food all day. That's one of the things. Of course, when it comes to Jonah and the big fish, forget that. They just don't think that that, that, that even happened. And you'll find that these are very educated professors that teach future pastors a lot of different things that this is what they're supposed to teach in their congregations wherever they may end up going wolves another thing that you'll notice with a wolf is that it'll be a, it'll be a pastor who will not ever say the name of Jesus Christ we'll talk about God everybody believes in God so when you start talking about Jesus Christ, that is kind of where you draw the line. People get upset when you mention the name of Jesus. And I go like, you know, there's a reason why you get upset. Because he must be real. Why is it that so many people just avoid the name of Jesus Christ? So when we answer the call and we go out into the harvest field, lesson two is we're going to be like lambs among the wolves. It's not going to be an easy thing. You're going to have to leave your comfort zone to enter the world of wolves. And there are many missionaries that, you know, used to be, I don't know nowadays what it's like to be a missionary, but you still think of, there are people who retire and go to a mission field. Only God can put that in someone's heart to do. You think when you get retired, that like what? Oh, good. I don't have to do anything more now. I'm okay. There's people who stay... They believe that God wants them to go somewhere. It doesn't have to always be overseas or some unknown place. It might be just where you live. The 
But there's people who need to hear the truth. I mean, remember, when that happens, not everyone's going to like to hear it. So I think of back to Genesis chapter 12, that truly God's call to Abraham. His name wasn't Abraham at that time, it was Abraham. And God told Abram to leave his country, to leave his family, and to go to a place that I will show you, which he did. But that took faith, to believe in God's word, regardless of what anybody else would say to you or about you. Follow God is always the best thing. And so I just... Uh, I want to ask those of you that are here today. Are you willing to go? If the Lord says to you, I want you to go here. Are you willing to go? I want you to leave the job, the career that you have. And I want you to do something completely different. Which is to just trust in me. Trust in my word. I'll take care of all the details. I've known of people who were afraid to go to the mission field because they thought they were going to be sent to Africa. And really all that God wanted from them was just to say, I'm willing to go wherever you want me to go. And once they made that commitment, the whole African thing left them. God was willing to see if they were willing to go. And God used them in where they lived, in America. And America can sure use some good evangelists nowadays. So I just ask you, if God asks you to leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you, would you have that dependence on God to say, here I am. I'm willing I'll go where you want me to go. Because it would take a real commitment of dependence. Depending on God. That's where God really wants us to be. To depend on Him. What is the American way? I can do it myself. <coughs> For the most part. There's going to be more and more Americans just like my adults. Those Americans, a lot of times, we have what we have because we have to strive for it, we have to work for it, we have to wait for it, and you can flip back in your life and be like, this is what I accomplished. What I accomplished. What is it that was accomplished for Christ? That's the bigger question. What's the biggest thing you accomplished for Christ in your life? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to follow you whenever we hear your call. And sometimes, Lord, uh, we can wrestle with that for a long time. Sometimes it takes years before we finally raise up the white flag where we surrender to you. And then when we do, we go like, what took you so long? That's just kind of how we, it, how we work it out sometimes in our lives as well. So Lord, there may be someone here today that uh, you want to use and that you are calling and have been for a long time. And uh, this is just something you want to remind him or her about. Come to you. All who are weary and heavy laden. The Lord's peace is something that everyone needs and will not have until we have something to follow Jesus and learn what that means. So, Lord, thanks for who you are. Thank you for the hearts that you are in here this morning as well. 
May you have your way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We are uh, going to go move into the communion service. I just want you to know this. You know, some of you probably never had communion here or you don't know what it's all about. Just want to kind of let you know. You don't have to be a member of Harbor of Joy to take communion. It's just between you and God. And uh, no one is here to judge you or to, to go like now. What is the most of that? Or I can't believe that, you know? That doesn't happen. It's, the important thing is it's between you and God. And if that is something that you would like to do, you just want you to know that Jesus invites you to come to his life. It's all about Jesus. That's what we try to do. And so if you'd like to come, there's two stations that we have. Uh, one station is right here. You'll be ushered. You come here and receive the elements. If you want to go up onto the, uh, the altar up here and you want to kneel and to be served and stay up there as long as you want to pray or whatever, that's entirely up to you too. Feel free to do so. There is gluten-free wafers. Some of you that need gluten-free, the gluten-free wafers are in the little packages that don't be touch. So they're here. If you don't want wine, but you want grape juice, there is grape juice. It's, it's white. It's kind of the center of the, of the tray. But that's entirely up to you. If you want grape juice, you just hold your hand like this. And the ones who are serving will know that that means you still have grape juice rather than so um, I think that's all the announcements uh, that kind of pertain to communion. But you know, if you don't want to take communion, that's entirely up to you. We do ask that if you do come, take communion, that you know Jesus as your Savior. That He truly is the one that you follow, the one that you want in your heart and your life. And uh, even if you mess up, you know, and you all mess up. But God is here to forgive strengthen us as we partake of his, of his meal. It's his meal. Not mine, not the church's. We're just doing what he asked us to do. So with that being said, I'm just going to move this over to the side, and then we will recite the Apostles' Creed together and ready to stand as we recite it. It's up on the monitor, where it says this, and we say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
feel it for you. More likely, they didn't understand it at the time he said this, but they would come to realize what he's saying later. This is my blood hidden for you. Do this remembrance of me until I come again. So we find that when we come and take communion at the time of it's just you and God. God wants to just touch your life. He wants to strengthen you so that you wouldn't be so vulnerable when it comes to be sin, because God can do that. And so he invites you to come today if that is something that you so desire.
green light. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has now given you his holy body and blood, through which he has made full satisfaction for all your sins. May he strengthen and preserve you in true faith on your everlasting life. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I came here as an immigrant from Russia in 1893. Whatever success I have had as a songwriter, I owe to this country. These are words from the man whose God bless America. It was introduced by Kate Smith in 1934. So would we stand together and unite the world. 